In the aftermath of tragedy, Shinji Ikari grapples with emotional paralysis, unable to pilot the mighty Evangelion Unit 01. Nier faces off against the secretive seal, each racing to realize their apocalyptic visions. As chaos slowly consumes the world, Asuka leads a desperate defense while Misato hunts for Shinji. Humanity's last hope and evacuation warning is being announced. Shinji looks at Asuka's immobile form and admits Misato and Ayanami scare him. He roughly shakes Asuka, asking her to help him, make fun of him like she always did. Later, he looks at his hand and admits he's messed up. Three colleagues discuss the situation as one of them asks why they're still on level 1 alert when all the angels have been eradicated. His friend admits they have no idea of what's going to happen to them and says they'll just have to stick it out until the instrumentality project starts. A meeting is being held and the men discuss how beings as flawed as mankind have finally reached their evolutionary potential and the human instrumentality project will artificially evolve humanity into a single perfect being. To achieve this, the committee plans to use Eva's, remarking that their only hope is Eva Unit 01, the solo clone of Lilith. As Misato is working, she finds out the truth behind the second impact and suddenly thinks they've found her, but realizes it's starting. At the headquarters, Fuyutsuki realizes all outside network links have been stopped as the researchers informs him that all invasions are simultaneously targeting the Magi. He asks if the Magi too, what Haibu replies that it's at least five different types hearing which Fuyutsuki realizes that Seal is pooling all its resources. The fourth firewall gets breached and he acknowledges that the seizure of the Magi means the occupation of headquarters. He approaches Ritsuko who guesses they need help with the self-defense of the Magi and remarks that abandoned women like herself have their uses too. Misato receives a call, informing her that any RVs have been stripped of all legal protection and command, has been transferred to the Japanese government before the woman on the other end. Ibuki tells her that Ritsuko has started working on countermeasures, shocking her. As Ritsuko is working, she questions if she's doing something idiotic and remarks that logic has no meaning in the relationship between a man and woman. Misato sees that recovery of ground information in Gora has been improved by over 0.3%, and asks how much longer it'll take to which Klingwe tells her that they should be able to make it, praising Ritsuko. Hearing this, she remarks that the deployment of the firewall will only take two and a half minutes at most while Fuyutsuki tells Gendo that the seizure of the Magi is just foreplay, their true objective is to launch an all-out attack on the headquarters and seize the remaining EVA units by force, although they both have Adam and Lilith. The hacking of the Magi suddenly stops and external access gets cut off for 62 hours while Ritsuko says goodbye to her mother. The committee discusses how she has installed a Type 666 firewall on the Magi's external circuits, remarking that it won't be easy to breach and deciding to give up on seizing their Magi. Number One says he wanted to settle this quietly, but they give him no choice and orders the invasion forces to be launched immediately. As the invasion forces begin attacking, Fudatsuki informs Gendo that radar sites 8 to 17 have gone silent and a special forces battalion is advancing towards the Gora defense line, while two more battalions are approaching from Gotemba. He orders all personnel to head to their battle stations as the invasion forces barge in and start swiftly taking down the security. Misato says they'll go for the pilots first if they're really after the pilots, ordering to have Shinji be put on standby immediately. She orders Ashuka to also be put in Unit 02 despite the researchers informing her that she hasn't regained her synchro rate yet. She answers that she'll be killed if they find her there so at least she'll be safe if they put her in Unit 02 and orders them to find Ri as well. As enemy forces invade Level 2, Fuyatsuki admits there's nothing they can do to stop them, and there's only a matter of time until they're overwhelmed, but Gendo stands up and asks him to take care of the rest and to give his regards to Yu before walking away. As Misato is looking at how they're slowly getting overwhelmed, she inwardly remarks that it's no good since they're not used to killing humans. She orders all units to retreat and to have Bakalite be injected into all routes and pipes up to Section 803. She swiftly takes a gun and apologizes to Hyuga for going off without them before leaving. They start bringing out guns as well, but Hyuga remarks that this place won't last long if the JSSDF is fully mobilized. Gendo visits Ri and tells her that the promised time has come. The invasion forces receive permission to shoot non-combatants as a squad finds Shinji and prepares to terminate him, but Mizato quickly rushes in and takes them out. She realizes the forces are trying to separate Shinji from Unit 01 and tells him to choose whether he wants to run away or pilot the EVA, but he just asks Ashuka to help him so Misato questions he's going to hide behind a girl at a time like this, so he dejectedly mutters that he just wants to die, but she tells him to get it together since he can die afterwards. What? As the researchers are shielding themselves from gunfire, a bomb suddenly drops above the headquarters, seeing which Fudetsuki says they're overdoing it and Ibuki questions why they want the Eva so much. 
Misato explains that they intend to initiate the third impact but plan to use the EVA series instead of the Angels, explaining how the second impact was created 15 years ago and was done before the Angels awakened to reduce Adam to an embryonic state, minimizing the damage cause. Humans were born from a being called Lilith who is a source of life just like Adam. Humans are the 18th Angels and the remaining Angels are possibilities and other versions of what humanity could have been. Misato tells Shinji that he has to destroy the EVA series, since that's the only way for them to survive. At the Prime Minister's office in Nagano Prefecture, the minister remarks that humanity is probably the only creature capable of hating its own kind. His secretary asks if he's going to ask Germany or China for help in reconstruction, but he denies and says they won't make the same mistake twice and tells her to make sure no one can touch it for the next 20 years, like old Tokyo. As the invasion forces are examining the location, Asuka wakes up in the EVA and despairingly says she doesn't want to die as a voice tells her to stay alive and says it will make sure she doesn't die. Suddenly, an explosion occurs in the middle of the location and the forces wonder if they got it, but Asuka's EVA rises up out of the water, holding a gigantic ship and uses it to shield itself from gunfire before flinging it at the cannons attacking her. Asuka happily tells her mother that she finally understands now and catches two missiles aimed at her, exclaiming that she's always been with her. Shinji happily realizes Asuka's alright and is still alive as she menacingly approaches the enemy forces and confidently says she's got 12,000 metal plates even without the umbilical cable, swiftly destroying the jets coming at her. She screams out that there is no way she's going to lose. At the meeting, the members remark that they'll have to fight fire with fire. They drop the completed EVA series on her as Fubatsuki notes that they sent all nine units complete with S2 engines and questions if they plan to initiate it here. The Eva's surround Asuka and Mizato tells her to make sure to destroy the Eva's, assuring her that she'll send Shinji there as soon as she can. She drags Shinji away as Asuka questions how Misato can be so rude with someone who just recovered, seeing that she only has 20 seconds for each Eva. She quickly rips one to shreds as Misato takes Shinji to Unit 01 and the forces attacking them get order to retreat. Misato clutches her bullet wound and warily tells Shinji he can still make it, explaining that he'll be on his own from now and will have to make his own decisions without anyone's help. He says he can't. If all it means is hurting and killing people, then he can't pilot the EVA. He explains that he thought he thought he had no choice in piloting the EVA, but he was fooling himself since he doesn't understand anything, and there's nothing he can do for people. He admits he's done terrible things to Asuka and even killed Kaworu. There isn't a shred of honesty in him, only dishonesty and cowardice. Misato says she's going to feel sorry for him, and if he doesn't want to feel pain, then he can just sit here and die because crying isn't going to solve anything either. Seeing his expression, she remarks that he hates himself and hurts others because of that because hurting them is more painful for him than hurting himself is, but no matter what lies ahead, it will be the result of his own decisions which means he will have made a difference, so he should stop hurting himself and should realize that there are other options. Shinji says she's just a stranger and doesn't know anything about him, so she angrily tells him that she'll never forgive him if he doesn't do anything explaining that she's made a ton of mistakes, but she learns something from them every time. She asks him to pilot the EVA to settle this one and for all and find out why he came here in the first place, to search for the answers. She tells him to come find her once he's done that. Once he begrudgingly agrees, she kisses him and says they'll do the rest once he gets back. She pushes him into the elevator and collapses as soon as the door closes, questioning if she did the right thing before an EVA suddenly destroys the room. Asuka wildly takes down the Evas one after another as Ritsuko points her gun at Gendo, remarking that she's been waiting for him and Rie. She shockingly sees that the button isn't activating and realizes Casper betrayed her so Gendo takes out his gun and shoots her. Meanwhile, Ebuki alarmingly notices that there's less a minute left in Asuka's reserves as Asuka desperately stabs two Evas at the same time before the Spear of Longinus suddenly attacks her and her power supply ends. The researchers notice in shock that the defeated Eva series has been reactivated, they simultaneously lunge at Asuka and start ripping her body to shreds before she gets stabbed by multiple spears. The researchers hurriedly inform Shinji, but he depressingly says he can't get to the Eva so it breaks out of the bakelite covering its body and slowly reaches out towards Shinji before an explosion occurs. The invasion forces watch the devil in shock as Shinji sees the remains of Asuka's Eva and screams in anguish. The forces suddenly sense an unidentified object approaching from outer space and Fuyutsuki realizes that it's the Spear of Longinus as the meeting members satisfyingly agree that their plan of bringing the true Spear of Longinus has worked before preparing to begin the ritual. The Evas surround Shinji and bind him seeing which Fuyutsuki wonders if they're trying to use Unit 01 as a medium. As the Evas take Shinji higher and higher into the sky, 
The members discuss how he has been marked with the stigmata and decide to resurrect the Tree of Life, saying their servants the Eva series was created for this very moment. The researchers announce that the Eva series has unleashed its S2 engines and the dimensional graph is showing negative values, so there's no way for them to see the measurements. Fuyatsuki gravely says it's an anti-F field as Ibuki remarks that this entire phenomenon is like 15 years ago, and this is the harbinger of the third impact. The S2 engines reach their molecular bonding and a commander of the force says their mission has failed as a colossal explosion suddenly starts spreading and Fuyatsuki hurriedly orders the researchers to set the absorber to maximum level so that it can hold. The meeting member explains that this is the Red Earth Purification Ceremony and says first, they have to return the Geofront to its original form, a source of all human life, the Egg of Lilith, the Black Moon. Gendo remarks that it seems to have begun and tells Ri that it's time to unite him with Yua once more, but she says she's not his doll because she's not him and rises towards Ikari, saying it's calling out to her. It breaks free of his holds and falls down as Gendo watches in shock. It slowly rises as the researchers hurriedly see an unidentified high-energy source rising from Terminal Dogma. They question if it's an angel, but Hyuga alarmingly says it's a human as Ri's giant body rises up. Shinji looks at her in shock as the meeting gets ready for humanity's third retribution. The at fields of the Evas start resonating so Fuyatsuki questions if they're merging with Ri, and the Distrudo signal begins materializing. Fuyatsuki says the pilot's ego won't be able to take much more of this as Shinji asks Kaworu if that's where he's been. The researchers realize that his ego barriers are weakening and Fuyatsuki says the fruit of life is held by an angel and the fruit of wisdom is held by man. Now that's acquired both, the EU Unit 01 has become an entity equivalent to God and has been restored to the embryo of souls, the Tree of Life. He questions whether it will become an arc that saves them or a demon that will annihilate humanity, remarking that their future is up to Gendo's son. Ibuki asks if he's done the right thing, but he questions how he would know that. Kaworu tells Shinji that this Ri is his heart, and is the embodiment of his hopes and dreams, questioning what he wishes for. Shinji remarks that it's just like when he started practicing the cello and thought if he came here, he could find what he was looking for. A girl asks him to play with him so that they can work together to finish the castle, but their mothers arrive so they hurry back leaving him alone. He sadly builds the castle but wrecks it once he's done. Standing over it, he starts crying and begins building it once more. Asuka tells him that even seeing him gets in her nerves so he says that's because he's just like her. Ritsuko tells Shinji they should do it, so he asks if she isn't supposed to be meeting her friend today and says they've been cooped up here for a week now. She says she's getting the hang of it, he remarks that he thinks he's doing this stuff to prove his own existence, but she says that's ridiculous, and it's just two depressed adults licking each other's wounds so they want to feel needed even if it's only physical, it makes her feel wanted and it makes her feel happy. Asuka asks Shinji if he wants to kiss her, but Misato says they can't do that since it's not something kids should do. Not bad, not bad. Asuka tells Shinji that he doesn't understand anything and tells him to just stay away from her. He says he understands, but she denies this and questions if he thinks he understands her, if he thinks he can help her, remarking that she can't believe how arrogant he is. He asks how he can understand her, so she says he doesn't talk to her, he doesn't tell her anything, and he doesn't say anything, so it's impossible to understand him. Rhea asks if he ever really tried to, so he confirms that he did. Asuka says she knows everything about the weird fantasies he has about her and tells him to go ahead and do it like he always does, since she'll even stand here and watch him because if she can't have him all to herself, then she doesn't want him at all. He asks why she's never nice to him, so she says she is nice to him. He angrily exclaims that they're just hiding behind those smiles and want to keep things ambiguous because telling the truth is painful for everyone, but this ambiguity only hurts him more. He dejectedly says that's just an excuse and he's scared of things being like this, scared that everyone will stop wanting him again. He admits he feels awkward, he feels uneasy and asks them to please just say something, to not leave him alone and to please care about him. He slowly turns around to face Asuka. Misato and Ri and tells Ashuka that he wants to do everything he can for her and wants to stay with her so she tells him to not come near him anymore because all he does is hurt her. He desperately asks her to help him because she's the only one who can do that, but she says that's a lie because he doesn't care who it is. He's afraid of Misato and the first child, he's afraid of his mother and father so now he comes running to her because that's the easiest way to stop himself from getting hurt. He asks her to help him but she shoves him and says he's never really loved anyone, he's all he has but he's never learned to love himself. She disgustingly says he's pathetic, so he slowly wakes up and flips the table over, begging for someone to please help him and to not abandon him before starting to strangle Asuka, manically declaring that no one understands him and never understood anything. He thought this was a world without pain where no one would betray him, but they all betrayed him. They betrayed his feelings. 
Nobody wants him, so they can just die. He admits things would be better if he didn't exist and wonders if he should just die. As he's having a mental breakdown, the researchers announce that pilot response is nearing zero as the EVA series and Geofront are approaching E layer and rising. The anti at field exceeds critical limits, and they realize individual life forms will be unable to hold their shape if this continues. Fuyatsupi says the chamber of Guff is opening and the door to the beginning and end of the world is open at last. Ri says this world is drowning in sadness. Loneliness fills the hearts and souls of the people of this world. As Ri and Mizato slowly approach the researchers, Fuyatsuku wonders if Jendo got to meet with you as she slowly reaches out to cup his face in her hands. Ritsuko hugs Ibuki as everyone's bodies rip open and turn into goo. The main member of the meeting says the beginning and the end is the same before turning into goo. Jendo says he's waited so long for this moment to arrive and tells you that he can finally be reunited with her, remarking that keeping his distance with Shinji was for the best since he always caused him pain. He adds that he doesn't believe he can be loved by others because he isn't worthy of that. Yu says he was terrified by the bonds that people form and close off his heart as he wonders if this is retribution and asks Shinji to forgive him before being eaten. The entire world gets enveloped by the Eva's explosion as Rei inserts the final spear inside her and Shinji calls her name and starts having traumatic flashbacks. Misato says he can quit, it's painful. Ri asks if he wants to feel relief and become one with her before saying she'd never do that with him and would rather die. Shinji questions what dreams are and says he doesn't understand reality. One can't bridge the gap between truth and others' reality. He doesn't know where to find happiness, so you can only find happiness in your dreams, which is why this isn't reality. It's a world devoid of people, it's only a dream, and he doesn't exist here. Ri suddenly gets stabbed as Shinji asks her where they are. She says this is the sea of LCL, a world where no individuals exist and one where you cannot tell where you end and others begin. He says this isn't what he wants and it feels wrong and that reality is alright with him. He doesn't mind getting hurt by the Atfield again because he'll meet everyone. Shinji's Eva bursts out of Ri's eye and destroys the Eva's, as she tells him to not worry because everything will work out. Shinji bids farewell to his mother and wakes up in a silent place with Ashuko, lying beside him. He starts strangling her so she stonily cups his face in one hand, he breaks down and starts crying so she looks at him and calls him disgusting. Thanks for joining us on this journey through the tumultuous world of Neon Genesis Evangelion. The end of Evangelion. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more deep dives into your favorite Anon classics. Until next time, stay tuned for more thrilling adventures.